Hi, let's keep looking at dependency parsing. And in this video, we will look at how to convert a constituency parsing into a dependency parsing, how to convert one type of tree to the other. And we'll look at some examples from other languages as well. So this is what we had from last time. We have been using a kind of parsing that is based on constituents, which had words, group, uh, words grouped on noun phrases, verb phrases, prepositional phrases, and so forth. We, uh, in this case, in dependency parsing, we are going to focus not on the constituents, but on the relationships between the words. For example, the word prefer has a subject. The subject of the action prefer is I. I prefer. So we're going to have an arc that connects the word prefer, the head prefer, to the dependent I, because prefer has the subject I. And the label is going to be precisely subject. So the subject of prefer is I. We could have that for many other relationships. For example, the direct object of prefer is flight, because what do I prefer? Flight the flight. And so I connect the head prefer to the dependent flight with the label direct object. And as you can see, there's um, many types of labels. So for example, flight is connected with the label determiner to the determiner the, because what is the determiner of flight? The, the flight, and so forth. So as you can see, all of the words are connected to other words through some relation, which is described by the label, subject, direct, direct object, and so forth. And the verb is, uh, we think of it as the root, and because it's the one that anchors the sentence. So how do we go from the trees that we had before to these dependency parses? We have the example here, Vinkin will join the board as a non-executive director on November 29th. The first thing we need to do is to uh, take the heads of each of the constituents and float them up to their uh, phrase, to their dominating phrase. For example, we have the word join. So we here have the verbal phrase, join the board as a non-executive director on November 29th. So who is the head of this verb phrase? It's join because this phrase is about joining something as something on something. It's about joining things. So we're going to float this word up to the verb phrase and say that join is the head of this verb phrase. Then join will also be in a configuration with the, the, the auxiliary will. So we have the structure will join. But it's the head of that phrase, join, because when you say will join, you're talking about joining something. We have determined that the verb is going to be the root of the sentence. That is the one that's going to, to anchor everything. So we're going to float the verb, the word join onto uh, being the head of the whole sentence. So we have join as the start note, as the root. We can have other words, for example, board, which we're going to float up to it's noun phrase because it's the head of this noun phrase. So when you have the phrase the board, which of those two is the noun is the head of the noun phrase? It's board. Because we're talking about when we talk about the board, we're talking about a kind of board. So we have it here. However, board is not the head of the next constituent of the verb phrase. The head of that one is join because it's about joining something. So we cannot float it further up. So now we will have that there's a connection between join and board. So we will establish an arc that begins in join as its head and that ends in board as its dependent. That goes from here to here. We don't yet know what the relationship is between them, but we will draw an arc between the two. Likewise with the subject vinken, for example. So we have a noun phrase with just the word vinken. So what is the head going to be? Vinken. So we float it up to the noun phrase. But then when we have the next um, constituent, 
which is the whole sentence, Vinken will join. Blah, blah, blah. What is the head of that structure? It's the verb. So because Vinken is not the head of this subsequent uh, constituent, we cannot float it further up. So we floated it up as much as we could. So now we're going to have a direct connection between join and Vinken. As you can see, we're going to draw an arc that begins at join and ends at Vinken. We don't yet know what the relationship is between them. It's probably going to be a subject. But this is the way we're going to draw arcs between every word and every other word. There's some words that are never going to float up, like the, because it is not the head of any constituent. However, they will be joined into the sentence by the connections between everything else. So here we have the head of this NP board, which then will draw a connection, uh, an arc between board and the remaining word the. And this makes sense. So the first thing you need to do is to draw the arcs between words. The second thing you need to do is to figure out what the label is. And for that, we're going to be helped by parts of speech tags and by the intuitions that we were that we had about if you have two notes that are sisters, like noun phrase and verb phrase, what is the relationship between them? So in the last video, we had the example, Jane eats pizza. And if we pass that through a part of speech tagger, that's going to be noun, ver verb, noun. Jane eats pizza. Noun, verb, noun. Or noun phrase, verb, noun phrase. So we know two things at this point. One, that there is an arc that connects the words eats and pizza. So we know there's some relationship between them. And second, we know that eats is a verb and pizza is at the very least a noun. We do know that for sure. So if we have an arc that starts at a V and ends at an NP and they are right next to one another, so we have a verb and a noun phrase, that arc is probably going to be a direct object in English, such as eats pizza or reads books, for example. So we're going to make a program that tells you that if you see this, try to tentatively label it as a direct object. Likewise, if you, if you have an arc that goes from eats to Joanne, I'm sorry, to Jane, and you have the word Jane eats, if, you, if your arc goes from eats to Jane and the order of the word says noun, verb, then this structural relationship in English is, is usually a subject. And so we're going to tentatively label that as a subject. And we're going to make rules for each of the labels that we want. We're going to do our best, and then we're going to give this to human uh, workers who are going to help us correct the mistakes. They're going to tell us which labels worked, which labels didn't, and then we're going to go back to the program and refine it and refine it until we start getting good labels and arcs. In the process, we're going to collect a gold labeled training set. So a training set of things that we know are correct. Once we have accumulated enough of them, we can train a better classifier something like a, like a deep learning solution with a neural network or a support vector machine, where if you give the classifier the head of an arc and the dependent of an arc, the classifier can try to guess what the label will be. So if you tell it that the head is eat and the dependent is pizza, then the classifier is going to guess that these are in a direct object relationship because you eat pizza. Um, if you give it the head eats and the dependent Joanne, then you, it's going to guess that these two are in a subject relationship because it's seen it before as a subject because Joanne is the one that eats. And of course, as you get better at it and accumulate more examples, then you can make fancier structures. So if you want to check this paper out, this is from 2019. It's a BERT that gives you dependency parsings. 
So for example, if you have the sentence, the best optimizer is grad student descent, you have the word one, two, three, four, and the third word is optimizer. The bird predicts that the tag, uh, that that word optimizer has a connection and the head of that connection begins in the word for number four. So the word four is, is. So the head would be is, and the arc goes to optimizer. And the label of that connection would be subject. So the subject of the word is, is optimizer, which is correct. Um, but of course, you can only do this once you have accumulated a mass of uh, dependency parses that the computer can train on. So that is essentially how you make these by, again, it's expensive, it's time consuming, and it does involve uh, humans in the process. But eventually you accumulate a data set and eventually you can do really cool things like produce uh, dependency parsings in English, in Bulgarian, in Czech, in Swedish. So this website here, Universal Dependencies, has the standards for the names of the labels. So people try to use the same names for the labels across different languages. For example, this label here is a, the subject of a passive sentence. The dog was chased by the cat. And the subject of the passive sentence is indeed dog in English, as it's cucheto in Bulgarian, as it's pis in Czech, as it's hunden in Swedish. And as you can see, many of the uh, tags are the same. When you have an auxiliary, you tag it as an auxiliary. When you have punctuation, you tag it as punctuation. And then there's this interesting tag here, case by the cat. What is case doing there? Interestingly, dependency parsing is one of the few algorithms in natural language processing that was not made originally for English. It was made originally for Czech, for uh, the Czech language as we see the taggings here. And when they were making it, they had to include something that is an important part of the Czech language, which is case marking. On week five, we talked about case. In languages like German, Russian, Latin, words need to have certain modifications in order for them to, to express their function in the sentence. So if a word is the subject, it's going to have certain endings. If a word is the direct object, it's going to have different endings. If uh, you're telling that something belongs to somebody, it's going to have different endings. And yeah, if you've studied German, for example, you know these in the determiners. If you studied Russian, you know that the words, the word endings will change. So Czech is Slavic. It behaves like Russian. And very importantly, prepositions determine the case of the following noun. So for example, we here have the prepositions vedle for next, diki for thanks to somebody, and pro for for. So vedle ženi, next to the woman, the preposition vedle demands that the noun be in the genitive case. The preposition diki demands that the noun be in the dative case, diki ženi. The preposition for demands that the noun be in the accusative uh, case, pro genu. So the case of the word is determined by the preposition. So the relationship between these two words is one of case because the preposition determines the case of the noun. And that's why some things are labeled case. For example, here uh, we have in Bulgarian ot kotkata. So there's a relationship of case between them. Here in Swedish, af katten. There's a relationship of case between the preposition and the noun, between a preposition and the noun. And in English, we also have that between a preposition and the noun, even though our words don't change with case. But people use this to because the standard was invented for Czech. 
So in a sentence like, I prefer the morning flight through Denver, that's why this is labeled case. The, because there's a relationship between these two words, through Denver, and it's a relationship called case, because in Czech, a preposition determines the case of a word. As we see here. And by the way, there's many languages for which people have uh, done universal dependencies. So I invite you to click on it and take a look at more of these dependencies. So in summary, we can convert constituency parsing trees into dependency parsing trees. And there are standards for how we should do it, uh, including the ones in the universal dependencies database. So now we have two alternatives for how we can segment our sentences by constituents or by dependencies. In the next and final video, we will look at a third option, which is just chopping them into their larger components. Computer, play the Beatles. We're gonna call this chunking. <laughs>